I'm Dr. Giovanni Rondo as your host of Healthy Mind, Body, and Spirit. Thanks for joining me on another episode where we are focused on improving the entire world's health in a particular um, uh, consciousness of our local community here in the Louisville, Kentucky, Kentucky Anna area. Today's show, we focus on tobacco use and its effect not only worldwide, but in the African American community here in Kentuckyana. So just a few of the statistics, 500,000 uh, Americans annually die from tobacco use. 16 million have tobacco-induced diseases, and it's 70 billion uh, dollars in healthcare costs every single year just from tobacco use. Tobacco is a major contributor to the three leading causes of death. That's heart disease, cancer, and also strokes. Tobacco actually affects nearly every organ in the body. There are at least, at least 69 different chemicals that are carcinogenic or um, cancer causing within tobacco. So this is you know, obviously a very big problem, particularly for African-Americans, for our community. What we found is that African-American children and adults are more likely not only to experience secondhand smoke, but also to feel the dire effects of it. African-American children have higher levels of asthma because of that exposure to secondhand smoke. African-American people overall have a higher rate of high blood pressure, heart disease, and lung disease from this as well. And it, like I said, it's not just in our community, but it's really through our nation and worldwide. And it is a very major problem. It is really the number one pr most preventable cause of death and morbidity or disability for our entire community. Now, um, we're going to talk a lot um, about more statistics. We're going to also bring in some partners that we have today who are really in our community to help bridge that gap between our health and our wellness and disability and issues that go on in our community and help us to decrease the, the, the issues that we have when it comes to tobacco-related problems. So I'd like uh, for my guest today to introduce herself. I am a Louisville native. I grew up in the Jefferson County Public School System. I went to an HBCU, um, woo Kentucky woo. State University. Woo All woo. right. Um, I just graduated a couple of years ago. Uh, I won't <laughs> give you the number on that. Um, but um, I am now working with Community Action of Southern Indiana. Uh, formerly known, or we also call it um, Cassie, and I, um, I am the Minority Tobacco Prevention Coordinator over in Clark County, Indiana, the sunny side of Louisville. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I, um, what I do in short is I work with the community trying to get the um, smokers um, signed up for the Indiana Quit Line. We also there is also a quit line over here in Kentucky that's available. And then I work on policy and I work on um, apartment buildings, restaurants, casinos, and trying to get their smoking policies together and making sure that they're enforced. So that's a little bit about what I do. And the organization that I work for, um, Cassie, Communication of Southern Indiana, they are a 501c um, agency and nonprofit. We provide services as far as um, affordable housing, homelessness, um, solving the homelessness problem. Um, we have a Head Start program. We um, affordable housing, um, financial literacy. So we really work with the community and trying to get them to be more self-sufficient and on their way to doing things on their own. So we don't 
just give them the assistance. We try to help them through it so they can become more self-sufficient. All right. Well, that's really a mouthful of, you know, the different things that you actually do. So you work for Community Action of Southern Indiana, in particular for, the, for, uh, for our show, you are the Minority Tobacco uh, Coalition Coordinator. Yes. Okay. And so just basically in a nutshell, you try to help to decrease the, the rates of smoking in our community. Mm -hmm. So what kinds of things do you all do to, that help with decreasing that or trying to help with that? Well, some of the things that I have done, I've been with them since October of last year. Okay. Um, we have community outreach, we have community health uh, affairs, mm -hmm. and basically going out to the public housing and different apartments to talk with the um, people that live there, work with them, once again, trying to get them signed up for the Indian Quit Line, and making them aware of different things that they could, that they should know or they ignore mm -hmm. about their health. Okay. So trying to get them to work on that. And at the health fairs, we introduce them to different things and different effects of smoking and talk about that. And then also we, um, my boss, she's a minority health initiative director. So she's really focused on the African-American community as well. So we okay. work together and try to pull things together to work on diabetes, heart rate, just getting them aware of what they should already be aware of, but sometimes they um, forget or they get too busy or stressed out. Okay, to okay. Deal with. So you really try to reach out into the community in different locations to try to help, not just with tobacco use, but also with other diseases. My, okay. focus, my focus is tobacco and tobacco okay. prevention. Okay. And she brings the other aspect of it. And with the apartments, I mentioned that the apartments, we try to ask them if they have a smoking policy, if they thought about getting a mm -hmm. smoking policy, and share the information about allowing smoking in their buildings and mm. the effects that that could bring their apartments. You know, the stains on their walls, okay. the smells okay. in the carpet, and the fire, the wrist fire, and the secondhand smoke and the thirdhand smoke being passed on through the vents and on their furniture and the kids take it out. Okay, too. so just not just going from an individual standpoint in terms of outreach, but really looking at like organizations like, you know, apartment buildings and looking at the management and really trying to do it more of a systemic kind of way right. in terms of outreach. So, okay, that's a, a really neat way of kind of being more inclusive in, instead of just going right towards the, the individual. Right. So that's, that's great, great. So you talked a little bit about um, just, you know, what you do and, and how you kind of focus on, on the tobacco use. Do you have statistics uh, that you'd like to share with us? I know I brought up a few, but anything that you'd like to share with us, particularly when it comes to uh, the African-American community? And I'm specific to Clark County, so that's what I'll talk Clark County, Indiana, Indiana. In case okay. you are <laughs> in Jeffersonville. Um, that, that's a really huge issue that we're trying to deal with. And in 2019, one in five African-American adults in Indiana, 19.6% were current smokers. And then a significant, that was a significant decline from 31.4% in, 20, in 2012, but that still needs to be worked on because okay. they're not decreasing at the rate as other um, groups are, like the white community. Okay. They're not going down as far. And then historically, smoking prevalence in the African-American community in Indiana has been higher um, among whites. So the smoking prevalence, um, Larry said that the 19.6% comparable to the white adults at 21.8%. Um, so I mean, you see they're close, but the decline still is not where it's it not needs as to robust be. as it, it's not okay. where it needs to be. Okay. Now, is there, I've heard that, and, and I think I've seen also, um, that there's more of a push towards advertisement towards the African-American community and with certain types of cigarettes that are more addictive. I know that you know, just, you know, nicotine in and of itself is highly addictive 
and from what I understand, can be more addictive than some of the like the more illicit drugs and, and also alcohol. Um, also more addictive than like caffeine and um, cannabis, uh, heroin, things like that. Um, so uh, from what I understand, there's more menthol that's being pushed towards our community. And can you speak a little oh, bit about my, that? My goodness. Um, if you've noticed and if you've looked around, they, um, the menthol that's in the cigarettes, it makes it easier to be um, to initiate use and it makes it harder to stop. Mm -hmm. And with that, there's advertisements that focus mm -hmm. on the African American community and young people because with that easier it's easier on the throat and it you know it, it it's not as harsh because of the menthol. So it feels better going down, huh? Okay. It's kinda like a cough drop. When you mm. have a cough drop, you know you have this with the menthol, menthol and, yeah. So okay, okay. It eases that. So that's one thing and I will say that on April 29th, um, the FDA made an announcement and they mm -hmm. said they were looking toward banning the flavor the of menthol. menthol. Yes, but have they, they have not done that yet? No, they have, okay. it's gonna be a but year or two. But it's out there, yeah. yeah it's gonna okay. be a year or two, but the focus is there. And they know that it targets the black community, they know it targets youth and it makes, and then also lower socioeconomic status oh, as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. okay. I mean, you can go mm -hmm. to any community, lower economic urban community, and you'll notice the ads. Mm -hmm. You notice the placement. It'll be closer together, and you know a child might be able to look at it. Right. And they'll see it, and then the parent is right there. They they have coupons, mm -hmm. reduction in prices. I mean, just the advertisement. You, yeah. you can't miss it. Yeah. And it's it's focused, it's highly um, penetrating those communities. Wow. I mean, yeah, I think there is a, a, a big difference. I think um, as you know, we travel through West Louisville in particular, and, um, you know, I see a, a difference in West Louisville versus even upper... Um, the East End. The East End, yeah. Even looking at places like the Highlands, um, oh, yeah, which is... Yeah kind of like in the middle there. Um, the advertisements are just completely different. Um, so yeah, that, that, so that's very interesting. So it's really more highly advertised in our communities, um, much more so. And I can definitely remember just as a child growing up, um, actually I have uh, two parents that smoked, both my parents smoked at least for a while. And then I do remember smoking being a lot more access accessible and acceptable when I was a child at bowling alleys. Even I remember being on, a, on planes and you could smoke um, when the I was cool younger. Yep, going to the Cool Jazz Festival. Mm -hmm. um, just the cool idea, all of those different things. Um, and it's not just smoking. Uh, actually, my grandmother dipped snuff. My, my mother's mother dipped snuff. Okay. So yeah, we, uh, we knew when we would go to her house, don't look in jars and don't look in cans because she very liable to have spit in there. So, yeah, so just tobacco use just overall has been a part, I can definitely say is a part of my life. Um, and then here, just in the Kentuckiana area, you know, we had a lot of, and maybe still a few around um, factories. We had the Lorillard, which moved away years ago, Brown and Williamson, just some other Philip very Morris. large, mm -hmm, Philip Morris, uh, just some very large um, tobacco uh, factories, companies, big companies, and it, it really set a foundation for, you know, just our particularly West Louisville environment. So what do you think, you know, about all of that? Brown and Williamson, they knew that they wanted to target the black community mm -hmm. because the money was there. They, mm -hmm. they knew that we had the money so the, oh let let's let's target them. Mm -hmm. I mean very kind of very aggressive. Oh yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean they they knew that the money was there, so they wanted to. And if I can remember the quote, um, one of the community one of the quotes from a while back was like, no, we're not smoking that stuff. They didn't say stuff. We're just selling it. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! Yeah, okay, we're just so they're not—they're not actually using it themselves. They're just giving it to yes. others to be able because, to utilize that. And yeah, they know how to um, target the community. 
the uh, one of the things that the the political um, it's very political. They tobacco has deep pockets. Mm. They mm -hmm. know where the they know who to target, and they know where they're going to use their money. They have they spend millions, like you said, the, they spend millions and billions on marketing. Mm -hmm. They know what they're doing. It's not by accident. They know what they're doing. Okay, okay. Well, as a matter of fact, I do have a few statistics about that. Just, and, and you know, I know we're talking about, you know, the tobacco companies in and of themselves, but believe it or not, I was really surprised to hear how years ago, physicians actually used to advocate the use of tobacco products. Oh, yeah. So, yes. um, and just for marketing purposes, I just have to kind of read this. Um, in the late 1870s, cigarette companies strengthened their brand due to color printing, um, which they heralded a, a new era of advertising and marketing. And they reassured the public that the products were safe because actors, athletes, doctors, and dentists endorsed these products. So Philip Morris, in particular, had a saying uh, where it was scientifically proven. This was, of course, in the years years ago. And, um, proven that they were far less irritating to the nose and the throat. Camels had an advertisement that said that more doctors smoke camels. And then there was a, I guess a brand called L and L and M. And they had, as they're saying, just what the doctor ordered. Mm -hmm. And camel also had um, a saying that their cigarettes were for digestion's sake. Yes. Let's see. Um, Lucky Strike. Lucky Strike. Um, their saying was to keep a slender figure no one can deny. So the advertisements were, you know, pretty significant, you know, years and years ago. Um, and they're obviously they're not um, in that same light anymore. Um, as a matter of fact, the, the very first uh, Surgeon General report uh, back in 1964 um, the Surgeon General had actually put together a lot of information about cigarette smoking and actually put out the report about the hazards of cigarette smoking. And so when he was actually posed uh, in terms of the question about uh, cigarette smoking, they asked him when he had quit smoking and he said, hmm, probably about 15 minutes ago. <laughs> so yes, so this is back in 1964, so that was kind of interesting. So doctors you know, themselves actually smoked more. And, but, you know, I think it goes along with um, when you know better, you do better. So science has been actually, um, you know, done properly. And actually the, the information came out that cigarette smoking was obviously hazardous to your health and not, you know, you know what the marketers had actually talked about, you know, initially. So I thought that was just very, very interesting. Um, but now we're still in this kind of like this phase of, you know, it, it's even though it's not in that same way, but there's now vaping, there's now e-cigarettes, there's now more subtle um, ways that people are utilizing, um, you know, these similar products, maybe even more dangerous. So can you oh, speak oh. to some of the other things that, that are, are going I mean, on now? Yes, they is definitely more dangerous. Um, mm -hmm. So it's more subtle. You know, yeah, I mean, you think they, that it's actually okay to, to vape, but can you talk a little bit more about that? Well, vaping, it was started off as an alternative to mm -hmm. smoking, mm -hmm. a safer way to not smoke. Right. Um, you know, they, they big cartridges and you, you couldn't really hide them and they still make them, but you couldn't really hide them. So it started off as a sensation product. That didn't last um, for very long because then the creative marketing made it pleasing to the eyes, kid-friendly. Mm. I mean, you have flavors like cotton candy, mm -hmm, strawberry, mm -hmm. pina colada, all those different flavors mm -hmm. that they could That are more use. attractive yes. to... But who are they more attractive? To kids and, yeah. I mean, the, the, the cotton candy, mm -hmm, strawberry, mm -hmm. cherry. Wow. And you know what's so interesting about that? I, you just reminded me. I remember when I was a kid, I used to go to the corner store and there used to be these, it was like, a, 
it was gum, but it was actually in the shape of cigarettes. Oh, yeah. And I, I used to, that was like one of my favorite things to go and get at the candy store. And you was, can, yeah, you can kind of blow a little smoke <laughs> with it. And so you could kind of act like, you know, you were smoking. But of course, my daughter, you know, you didn't hear that. She didn't hear that, you know, on yeah, this show. Yeah, no, 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 mm -mm, no. No, mm -mm. Because they still sell them. <laughs> oh, do they really? Okay. Um, okay. I, I don't, it was at a store. I won't name the store. But mm -hmm. it was at that store. My friend and I, or my coworker and I, what? They still have this. Right, so, right. Um, it's, becoming a, it's becoming a trend. Uh, I've had several schools contact me about vaping issues mm. in the school because... They could be right underneath you and just take a puff and you never know because sometimes it doesn't blow out smoke or they can mm -hmm. keep it in and but it can smell like candy. Mm -hmm. But it that still affects that it still affects other people. And yes. so what is it? So does vaping actually have the actual carcinogenic products in it, the nicotine and some of the other products? OK, but it it's has, more subtle. Yes, it has. But. It's, it's kind of subtle in a way, but some vaping products, and some kids like to call it juuling, because mm -hmm. that just sounds better, sounds mm -hmm, cooler. Mm -hmm. um, but one single jewel can have enough liquid in it as the same amount as 20 cigarettes. Oh, wow. And okay. the nicotine levels are, are higher. Are, are even higher. Okay. So, okay. That you know, that's affecting their lungs. That's mm -hmm. affecting their breathing, their mm -hmm. brain development because you know their brains aren't developed. I don't have to tell you that they're, right. they're not right. they're not developed yet. Mm -hmm. um, some adults, I wonder too. But the the products, they're not <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> they're not. It's not safe. It's not safer, and it can have more effects on your health because you're mm -hmm. breathing it in, mm -hmm. and the liquids. They, they can, it causes popcorn lungs. Wow. Uh, okay. So, I mean, it's, it's not safe. Uh, so I'm glad that you brought that up because um, just as I alluded to a little bit earlier, just some of the effects of tobacco, we, you know, we know how it affects the lungs, um, increases your risk for chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, which includes emphysema and also bronchitis. Um, it stimulates the airway and, and it irritates the airway. So it exacerbates asthma. Um, and so that's, you know, much more common in children. Um, heart disease and also strokes, it actually increases the triglycerides and blood pressure and also the stickiness within your blood vessels in and of themselves, making you more susceptible to blood clots as well. Um, and that's one of the reasons why in, you know, some populations we advise, like in women, and we don't advise birth control pills and, and certain things. Um, when you smoke and you're at a certain age because of the risk for blood clots. Um, diabetics, uh, smokers are at a higher risk for diabetes. Um, smokers are at a higher risk for gum disease, uh, things that are more obscure called Berger's disease. Um, you also have an increased risk for uh, infant mortality, SIDS, uh, sudden infant death syndrome, and low birth weight babies with tobacco use. Um, also, mental illnesses um, as well, depression and also anxiety. And believe it or not, vision loss too. Mm -hmm. um, you do have a higher risk for vision loss. So, you know, and not to mention an increased risk for changes with your skin and um, actually more wrinkling. So, if someone is, you know, has some issues with, you know, vanity or whatnot, or, or, or even just, you know, wants to be, you know, healthier just from the outside in. You know, it does cause more of a wrinkling of the skin and more aging, you know, um, going on there. So all the more reason to, you know, have a discussion like this to, to, to talk about it, but not just talk about it. What kinds of things can we do about uh, decreasing the, the tobacco use in our community? So you mentioned just some of the things that you're doing. Well, uh -huh. the, the, one of the things Anymore? is, too, I mean, they, when I'm out in the community, I hear... Smoking is one of the last things I have. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. a stress reliever. Mm -hmm. it, you know, it's a um, coping mechanism. mechanism. Uh -huh. And they think it relaxes them, but it doesn't do that. It mm -hmm. does the opposite. It increases your heart rate, which causes the risk for heart attack and stroke mm -hmm. and, like you said, diabetes and all that. So it's not helping you. Um, some of the things that I think that we could do is realize that 
it is a social justice and health equity issue. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because they are targeting the communities. They're targeting our young people. Yes. They're targeting people that think, and even some of the leaders in our community as well, think that banning menthol, oh, that will further criminalize our No. They're not going after the people that are smoking or using the menthol, looking after the, the producers and having them take that um, out of their mm -hmm. production or whatever mm -hmm, you want to call mm -hmm. it. So knowing that um, and just realizing that they need to join, join the fight and um, help us mm -hmm. combat this issue. Work on other stress relievers. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You, you, you know about that mm -hmm. because smoking is not a stress reliever. Well, there are some, so absolutely long-term, it's definitely not. Um, but that immediate hit, we have yes. to say, oh, it yeah. does kind of feel good. We, you know, of course I only, I've only taken, I have to admit, I've only, and my daughter didn't hear this either. Um, <laughs> one puff of one cigarette when I was 11 years old. And so, no, actually I think I was about 12. And, and so, yep, yeah, right? yep, yeah, I got sick immediately. I coughed and that's it. But, you know, but the whole feeling of it um, does help to kind of, you know, at that moment, relax. But then there are those, uh, the, the issue with increasing your blood pressure, constricting your blood vessels, and all the other things that it actually does to your, to your body, you know, is not a good thing. So you talked about some of the things that, that is done to help people with, you know, not smoking. I know that, you know, just from a medical perspective, you know, there's um, pills that help people, specifically there's Shantix and Zyban. Uh, pills that help people with the, the, the issues with smoking. There's uh, nicotine replacement agents like there's the patch, there's the gum, there's lozenges, there's even an inhaler, you know, that we utilize to help people to quit smoking. There's uh, support groups um, that are very, very effective. There's actually, even, even before the pandemic, um, there's quit lines that you can actually call. There's committedquit.com where you can go online. Um, along with that, that's one of the things that I do suggest. Um, the Indiana Quit Line for me, okay. there is Quit Line in Kentucky, and you call that, you get a quit coach. They walk you through the process. In Indiana, I'm not sure about over here, uh, our Quit Line is 15 years old, and we were offering four weeks of nicotine replacement while oh. supplies last. Awesome. For free. Okay, awesome. So that's one thing. Also, real quickly, get involved with our coalition. Find the coalition over here. We have a coalition and our leadership team, which she is, I'm very honored to have her be a part of. Um, mm -hmm. So join the coalition. Um, we do a lot of the work for you. We just need your support. So I'm pretty sure there's um, programs over here that are the same. If you live in Indiana, you can join us um, in our coalition. You can reach out to me. And, um, and where can they reach you? My phone number is 812-288-6451, 812-288-6451, extension 2122. Okay, okay. And on that note, also, just some other things besides, you know, the group that you talked about, there's also um, some one-on-one -on -one, um, entities that are available to help people, particularly just sitting down with someone's primary care physician and talking with them about, you know, uh, help with smoking cessation. Um, there's also, there's some different types of things that, that, you know, there's a little bit of data about hypnosis, hypnosis, I should say, and needling. Um, I still have to look into that a little bit more uh, strictly, but those are things that are a little bit alternative that may help some people. Um, but whatever it takes, you know, stopping the smoking, stopping, not just smoking, but tobacco use is very, very important for our entire community. You need to get to the why, mm -hmm. why you're smoking, mm -hmm. what's the reason behind that, and what your reason is for quitting. So if you can get to the why and find a reason to quit, that can start you on your journey. Absolutely, absolutely. And I believe that a great reason why is because that'll help us as a community to be stronger, uh, just to be better, um, to just be a, a greater force in the entire world for That's our true. community. So just some of the things that I, I do um, advise people to do, you know, to help them with their, their, their journey. 
um, because we're all about health here, um, is to face it. Um, like you said, look at the why. Why are they smoking? And what kinds of things can they do in substitution? Um, they should find an advocate for themselves, like a primary care physician, that they can sit down with and talk to um, about you know, stopping smoking or stopping utilizing uh, the, the, the substances, whether it's smoking or vaping, um, snuff, things like that. Advocating uh, for change, like changing the laws, um, is vitally important as well to help with, with this whole issue with uh, the use of tobacco. I believe that if we make it more difficult to get and more expensive, that actually would help us to decrease our rates you know, just That's overall. That we try to do in Indiana. We try to advocate for a tax increase on the cigarettes. Okay. That didn't actually get to work. So okay. um, we wanted a $2 increase. Then it was going to be a dollar. Then they took it down to 50 cents. We're like, okay, what, let's just not do it. Um, mm -hmm. We did get an increase on our e-cigarettes. Okay. So that is... A, a t a, on the amount of the e-cigarettes? Or the taxing not on, of it. Not on, not on the liquid part, but on the tobacco products. Oh, it's, I see. It's going to be taxed as a tobacco product, okay. not based on the liquid, because the liquid is not that much, and it, would, it wouldn't be enough tax to make any difference. Mm. So we did do that. So that's where and I forgot I did have a comparison on the Kentucky um, cigarette tax and Indiana. We're... The two of us are the lowest as far as... Um, oh, really? Throughout the whole nation, Indiana and Kentucky? And then, yeah, yeah. Have the lowest taxes on cigarette products? One mm, of them. Okay, so, okay. There you go. Yeah. I mean, the, that's, you increase the tax, you're going to lower the usage. The usage. Okay, okay. Yeah. So that definitely sounds like that's a, a place where we can advocate, you know, for a higher taxes, you know, just overall. Um, yeah, to Indiana, decrease the use. Indiana mm -hmm. hadn't increased their tax for 14 years. Wow. Okay. It's still well, 99.5. Okay. Lots of great information today. Thank you so much. Thank so, you for having me. Thank you, Nita White, for coming and, and sharing with us the great information and the wonderful things that uh, the Minority Coalition of Southern Indiana is doing. Thanks for joining us here at Healthy Mind, Body, and Spirit. So thank you, uh, audience, for joining us for another episode of Healthy Mind, Body, and Spirit, where our goal is the improvement of our entire world with a particular focus on the local African-American community. Our goal on this show today is to decrease tobacco use. Let's do it together. Let's do it together. Let's face it. Let's advocate for change. And remember, your voice matters, literally. Thank you.